episodes 96 tracks. It's day five. I've gotten a lot of really helpful feedback on my previous two videos attempting to test this M1 MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I really thank you for all of your encouragement. I really appreciate the helpful feedback. And I do want to provide valuable content while I have this opportunity because I still think I'm going to return this M1 when I'm done, but I do want to see what else can be done to optimize it for music production first. My main goal here is to see what work can get done. These aren't meant to be purely theoretical tests. I'm not trying to see how many reverbs I can load. I'm trying to use larger orchestral sample libraries with multiple mic positions, many round robin velocity layered samples. So the RAM overhead, it might be safe to say, seems far greater than what many users will need for other purposes like video editing or certain styles of pop and electronic music production. The audio output needs to be handled in real time while we compose and arrange without voices dropping out or distracting clicks. And ideally, we will also be able to record new parts while all that is handled as well in real time. In this third video, which is day five of owning this while my MacBook Pro is in the shop due to a swollen battery, I'm going to try optimizing the machine to squeeze the most out of it that I can. Here are some new things that have been recommended. And these seem mostly specific to contact in Studio One. Have you tried loading the samples direct from disk in contact or lowering the preload buffer size as a global option? Using the memory server, lowering the voice count, using Logic instead of Studio One, lowering Studio One's device block size or changing its dropout production values, quitting the background Adobe support applications from Creative Cloud, using an audio interface instead of the Mac built-in audio, uh, have you tried it with the Synchron player? I've got that installed, East-West Play. I think I installed that. Let me just check and make sure it works. Vienna Ensemble Pro and a slave with more RAM. I will try that once my Mac gets back if I have some time. We already did try purging samples from contact. That only gets you so far. And we tried rendering the MIDI data to audio, which will certainly work in some cases. But, you know, someone pointed out if, if you need to change the tempo or insert music or for any other reason, it convert a large number of tracks at once, like your whole project at once. You'll be waiting several minutes, depending on the length of the audio that needs to get bounced in order to make those edits. So it, it only, converting things to audio only works in certain workflows practically, unless you're willing to sacrifice time, which is again, going back to that quote unquote professional use case. If, if, if you need to get it done fast, because that's how you get paid, that time um, it, it doesn't make this a worthwhile investment as a computer. So before we get into it, I want to comment on the word professional a little bit more that I've that it's been thrown out in many online discussions. There are many kind of professionals working in the music world, so we need to be a little careful with that word, I think. The, the caveat here is that we're trying to get work done in the context of these larger 5, 10, 100 gigabyte sample libraries that are used to resemble symphonic or orchestral musicians playing in a scoring hall or an orchestral hall. And whether or not these are combined with synthesizers or other elements to make a hybrid sound or a Hollywood sound or a concert hall experience, the idea is a sort of convincing, you know, quote unquote, realistic or perceived realistic sound output. This niche use case has relied largely on Intel machines with 32, 64, 128 gigabyte of RAM. And that's why this relatively small community has not fully embraced the M1 Max just yet. There are plenty of other professionals in the music world who might not have such stringent needs. And furthermore, these slightly more extreme needs might reveal ways to optimize your setup to take advantage of all the RAM and CPU you have on any machine, even a Windows machine. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, a bunch of these were super easy to knock out right away. I'm using an audio interface. It's this Motu M2 that's gonna be typical for a mobile rig that you might use with a MacBook Pro. And I changed the uh, dropout protection, so that's down to medium. Uh, so M2 is being used as the device. Uh, 32 samples is probably unreasonably small. I did uh, also lower the voice count. So they only uh, ever use as many as 32. I basically gave them just a couple extra voices. I also changed all the Adobe stuff in the background. If you look at activity monitor here, you'll see that um, all the Adobe stuff is now gone. The sign uh, solo strings are fine. Let's look at how many voices they're using. Looks like they're always using about 
Just uh, about under 10 voices. Brass. Haven't heard any clicks yet. We've got a few more voices here. We're up to, I saw 20 quickly. 14. And then as soon as we get uh, contact involved, there's a click. There's another one. You can see the spike here. There was a spike there. Those are both contact. So those are all times that we're hearing clicks, but they're all the contact in instances. Now we're back to C CSS. Now I brought all the voices down in all of these to 32. Well, 32 voices here because they were maxing out around 28. And I wanted to give them a couple extra. Again, all of these are monophonic lines so that each track represents one either legato or just close, sustained uh, pitch. Now we're into Vista. There's more clicking and clacking happening. But again, we're at 32 voices. But you can hear, I think you can hear all the clicking and clacking. So it seems that contact is the first to go. This is everything, and we know this is, if, if it can't handle five instruments at a time, then it's not going to do the whole. Let's just play a little bit with the device block size first. I think that's something that most people would change first. We can try 512. Still dropping out, still spiking. The drives are Samsung 850s, 850 Evos. This is an external Sabrent drive enclosure for one of those M2 drives that is probably feeding around 900 megabytes per second. Now let's go up to 1024. What did I do? Oh, it just froze. It's just sitting there trying to play. Well, since it won't play, we'll just save and quit. So we're at 1024 samples at 48 kilohertz. I work in 48 kilohertz because most of my publishers want that to be the delivery format. Oh, there's a click. Drop out. Oh, there's another one. All right, so that's not working. Let's try changing the uh, dropout protection. We'll bring it to maximum with Vista instead. Are so good. All right, but can we do a gazillion voices? Probably not. So once again, let me go through and make sure all the contact instances are purged. So what we do here is global purge, update sample pool. And then that took that down to three megs. So I'm gonna do that for all of these instances of contact, and then uh, we'll try again. Okay, samples have been purged. We are down to a whopping, oh, we moved, removed a gig. We're only down to 25.75, so, but our swap is still an eight gig swap. Nope, there's a click. Oh, there's some. Okay. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And hung notes, nothing like hung notes. Okay, so what what have we got uh, left on our list? Surprising. What's it called? Memory 
Override instruments preload size, 18 kilobytes, but this has to be checked. Okay, well, uh, just because it works so well, now I want to try to reduce it even more. What if we went down to, what if we did the ridiculous, I never do 16 samples, let's see. Shockingly good. I didn't hear anything that sounded like audio crackling from the output of the of the sequencer. So I'm kind of in shock right now at how well this is working. Makes me just want to double the project size. Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> Let's check the swap file now. So there's 15 gigs of swap used, and the project is taking 33 gigs of memory, right? Okay, so that's impressive. And, uh, and that was at 128 samples with the dropout protection at maximum. I, I'm kind of trying to figure out what to do next. I mean, you could enable low latency. Low latency is enabled now. Here, I'll do the horn. So there's one little crackle there. This is sign, and then uh, we'll do Vista's um, cellos. I'm loading more samples in, so it's gonna... So let me um, record a little bit while it's playing back. You probably couldn't hear it, I couldn't hear it, but this is my recorded Vista part right there. So that's what I was playing. Pretty, pretty good. I was able to get some notes in. Wow, so I guess I'm pretty shocked. We've got low latency on, so I can do low latency recording. The auto device setting was 128 samples. So this is 64 monophonic tracks. Should I try adding another 32? All right, we have added another 32 tracks. So this is 96 tracks we're up to. Well, that is getting pretty clicky. Let's go back and just double the device block size. So we'll just go up to 256. All right, still pretty clicky. Let's change it to 512.
worked. That's 96 tracks. And all I really did was change that one setting. Holy cow. I'm, I'm just amazed that this did what it did. Override instruments preload size. Instrument preload buffer size. Now, I haven't tried the memory server yet. Um, I may need to restart to use the memory server, but I think we found our answer. I mean, if I can run 96 tracks at, what was it, 1024? So here's what, we've, what we're looking at. Uh, we've got um, a bunch of signs and contacts, basically. All live. The signs are running at 42.7 milliseconds of latency. Contacts at zero. And, uh, you know, let me see how easy it is to make an edit at this point. So what I want to do is change that top note of the, of the, the highest note of everything. Let's change it to uh, 2048. See if that fixes anything. <laughs> I 